Welcome along to the Invincible Podcast. And we've got a very good show for you today. Special guest in the place, we've got Charlene. Woo! Bringing a bit of glamour to proceedings, <laughs> unlike Julian over there. Good to have you on board, Julian. And Lee Judges. Now, as you know, I'm a little bit of a chef myself. So we've got a really useful sponsor on the show today. Um, Let's watch this video and hear a little bit about it and what I was up to in the kitchen recently. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Today, we're not just talking about goals on the pitch. We're also scoring in the kitchen with the help of HelloFresh. It's quick, it's easy and it's healthy. And best of all, it's delivered right to your door. HelloFresh has given us a brilliant offer to bring to you and that's an impressive 60% off your first order plus 20% off your next two months with the code AFTV60. If you get caught up in the hassle of your day-to-day -day routine like me, then HelloFresh is the answer. They handle the meal prep for you and provide you with easy step-by-step -step recipes you can cook up in the kitchen before tucking in in less than 25 minutes with their super quick and easy to follow recipes. HelloFresh also have calorie smart recipes all under 650 calories. So you can still enjoy brilliant flavors while keeping your balanced lifestyle. Make sure you scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description below to use the code AFTV60 for 60% off your order plus 20% off your next two months. There you have it, proper expert. How easy and tasty did that look? Click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen to use the code, which is AFTV60. And Julian, you get a whopping, I know you love this, a whopping 60% off your first box and 20% off for the next two months with HelloFresh. Big up to HelloFresh. And um, I was going to bring something for you guys to taste, but... But what? But what? I hate well, it all. I don't hate it all. <laughs> oh, mate. And plus as well, right, you'd have probably wanted some uh, hot pepper sauce on it, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. By the way, people, if you haven't seen it, right, you got to go watch this guy in the chicken shop challenge, right? He thought he was smarter than everybody yeah. else in the room, as usual, and ended up having to eat lots and lots and lots of volcano sauce. I, and I was poisoned. <laughs> you were poisoned. I was poisoned. You just lost... Well, actually, I'm not even going to reveal it. But um, you said you was feeling sick yesterday. Yeah, I, it, I had to cancel my gym class, my stretch and mobilise. I had Your to. What? <laughs> my, well, my, he's what? Cancelled it. He's, he's never been to one, has he? Yeah. I don't have to cancel it. I, I, go two, I go two, three times a week. Well, to stre to you stre want to go five, six to times a week? Stretch and mobilise. I had to make an unscheduled stop on the way home um, at Finchley Park? Park Station. What for? What for? I wouldn't recommend the public toilets there, but when needs must. Well, you have to use the toilet? Multiple times. I... <laughs> Did you I have a spreadsheet for that? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to also invest in a bottle of Gaviscon. So thank you very much. What are you, what are you trying to, like, for, like as if you're trying to put it on me? <laughs> it's not my fault. You had to eat lots of volcano sauce. Well, you were you were partly to blame. I was not. Listen, people, I'm not even going to explain, right? I want you to watch the video, the chicken shop challenge. Uh, this guy, he lost. You know, I'm going to reveal, he lost, yeah? And he che can't I take cheated it. cheated out of it. And he was not cheated. Watch it for yourself and find out, right? You've got to learn how to lose. Yeah. You've got to learn. Right? I know you did loads and loads of preparation, as yeah, you always he did. Right, preparation. <laughs> He still looks a bit shaken up today. Yeah, you seem quite few, stiff. It's taken me a few, oh. I, it, it did. It took me a day to get over it. Yeah, it's, it was, it's, it's taken it's me a, a few days to get strong. And also the amount <laughs> that I was, I was made to consume. It wasn't even a voluntary thing. I, I had my hand forcibly <laughs> put into the sauce. No, because you, you, because you weren't putting it, um, taking a decent amount. That's why. So we had to make sure that you, well, you know, yeah, you everybody indulged. else went play by the rules of it, but yeah. you had to try and go. Yes. What, what do you mean we? It was you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, listen, oh. watch that a separate video. We'll click it. We'll put that in the little description as well. You've got to watch that. And once again, thank you to HelloFresh. Use that code AFTV60. We've got Charlene here. Um, and we're going to discuss something with her in a second. Of course, what we're going to be discussing today is only one thing to discuss. It's the big one. Arsenal going to the Etihad to take on Manchester City. Huge, huge game in the title race. And we're going to discuss it, find out how you guys are feeling. Can we win it? 
Uh, you know, we, we, we haven't won there for a very long time. Can we go up there and get the job done? But Charlene's in the studio. And what, what I thought I'd do is um, get Charlene in because Charlene is running the London Marathon. Woo! Come on. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Robbie. Yeah, London Marathon. I know, it's such a big, big thing. Um, it's my first time running in the London Marathon. I am doing it to raise money for Macmillan Cancer. I've brilliant, also brilliant. brought my uh, vest that I'll be wearing oh, nice. um, during the marathon. And yeah, I'm feeling really excited. What, what's your number? Have you got your number yet so we can look out for you? I haven't got my number yet. I am going to get my name printed on it, so you know, everyone on the sideline can sort of support and cheer me on and, you know, keep giving me that encouragement. So remind us going. again, London Marathon's 25 miles. Um, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's, so it's, it's 26.2. <laughs> there you did, go. Did I ask you, what were you jumping in for? <laughs> you ain't running it, K. are you? <laughs> yeah, but, but I have one. Yeah. He, he huh? certainly did yeah. when he went to finish with yeah. <laughs> In record yeah. time as well, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 tra what training have you done for you? I mean, because, you know, to run, I know to, to run the London Marathon, and, and they've asked me a couple of times, and I've had to just say, uh, <laughs> I, I can't handle that. Right, it's a long run. But um, what training have you had to do for it? So there's been a lot of different training that I've had to be doing. So I do yoga for like stretching, flexibility, which is very important, because I noticed as well, when I ran the half marathon, I noticed I did have quite tight hip flexors and everything. So that is very important. I'm also doing my strength and conditioning training because it's not just about the cardio, it's about you know making sure your body's in the right condition to be able to sustain that sort of length. And I'm also doing a lot of running as well. So at the moment I'm running five times a week. How many miles? Um, so it's a different mixture every week. So some days I'll have an easy run, which would be 30 minutes to around 45 minutes. Sometimes I'll be doing interval training. Sometimes I'll be running up hills and then I'll have my long run, which can be, you know, three hours plus. Three hours just non-stop running? Non-stop running. Wow, wow, wow. So I need to have some good music in my ears to get me, you know, motivated, keep me going. Um, and we know, we live in London, so we know that the weather conditions ain't always the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's been challenging mentally as well as physically, because when it's pouring down with rain outside and it's freezing cold, you know, going to run out in the rain is probably the last thing that you really want to do. Um, however, you just got to overcome that mental barrier and you just got to get out there and run. So oh, all weather great. conditions, I've been out there running. I've been going to different locations as well. And, you know, just trying to make it enjoyable and yeah. fun. How, how long have you been, how long have you been training for now? So I've been co training consistently, you know, for the past how many years, but marathon specific training I've been doing, I started late last year. So I'll say around December. But I've been really going for it since January this year. I've been following, you know, uh, wow. strategic wow. And, program. And, and uh, you know, have you actually done the 25 miles yet? Or are you 26.2 <laughs> miles, Julian? Or are you, will you only do that on the actual day? So you only do that on the actual day. They don't recommend that you actually run the marathon as part of your training. It's just about, you know, doing the stuff that I've sort of told you that I've been doing and just building up. But the longest run I will do will be marathon day, which will be the whole. And have you hit the wall yet? You know when they say you hit the wall? <laughs> that, 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 that period where you feel like you can't go in anymore, yeah, but then I'm, you have to. Yeah, I mean, you do get moments like that where you're like physically and mentally tired, you know, because there's different factors that you've got to consider mm. as well, you know, stress factors, tiredness and sleep and things like that. So there are moments where I'm running, I'm like, oh mate, I don't want to do this. Then I'll just take a breather and then I'll just push myself and keep going. There was actually one long run that I was doing and you know, I was really struggling um, that day. I think I was aiming to do two hours and it got to an hour and a half and I thought, do you know what? I just, I can't do any more. Like I've given it my all and I really just don't feel like doing any more. And I did actually just listen to my body and I just stopped. Um, so yeah, I did, you know, encounter that, yeah. but you know. And when, when, when are you actually doing it? What's the date of the London Marathon? It's on the 21st of April, 2024. Wow. So it's not, not far, far, not far, at, far at all. Away. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like it's come round so quickly. So you ain't eating no Easter bun and cheese <laughs> and <laughs> Bun and cheese. Well, I'm gonna have a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you have to eat? You know? what, what do they tell you to eat now? Even now, do you have to like, follow a special diet and 
things like that? I haven't been prescribed with a diet. Um, I am a nutrition coach, so I do have an understanding of the things that I should be eating and things that I should, you know, perhaps cut out. So I have been, you know, controlling what I eat. But at the same time, I want to live my life as well. So if there's something that I really fancy eating that perhaps ain't the best thing to eat, then, you know, I might just have small amounts. You know, for example, if I'm in a social setting and I fancy, you know, something to drink, then I'm going to have it, you know. But, um, yeah, I've been drinking a lot of water, making sure my body's been hydrated, lots of fruits and vegetables. My carbohydrate intake has increased um, because, you know, that's your main source of energy um, to fuel your runs and everything, carbohydrates. So I've increased my carbohydrates, good carbs, brown carbs, sou sourdough bread and things like that. And, yeah, so Brilliant. I've been doing. Now, did you know uh -huh. there is somebody else here that has run the London Marathon. Oh. And who is that? Is it? Uh, you, what, what are you doing? Are we stripping Julian, off? Who is, oh, okay. Oh, He's got this? something to reveal. I hope it's nothing too. What is that? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> He's got a medal. Amazing. Uh, and also the t-shirts go with it. Oh, I love what's it. That t -shirt? What's the t-shirt? So at the end, they gave you a free t-shirt, which was one of the big motivators for me to actually do it. <laughs> oh. So that... Freebie. Lee, please check that medal is genuine. After he, when he bought in, <laughs> no, I'm still, my medals, all my I'm still genuine. remembering when he bought in no, those that trophies. London Marathon, that, 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 that is something to. Uh, he didn't buy it to be home. proud of. That is, That's I have to amazing. say. Hold on, hold on, is he didn't buy that or nothing like that. He didn't go online on it. I would never spend money. What on year something. did you run that? 1995. Wow. But there was something you said that was interesting that kind of brought me back to it. The um, the training, because you do train, you start training at the end of the year in December and you train throughout the really cold months. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get the motivation up to do it. But then the thing that hit me on, on the day was it had to be a really warm day that I did it and I wasn't prepared for, for the warmth. Mm. So that's one thing you've got to have in your head maybe when you're doing the training to kind of really dress up almost too hot yeah. to kind of prepare yourself. Ooh, and, and this thing about, the, um, about hitting the wall, one other thing that I didn't realise, the training is by far the most difficult part of it because you're on your own and exactly. you're in the cold. But on the day, it's just such an amazing day. I don't know if you guys have ever actually been to watch the marathon, but it's like a car it's basically a, a carnival atmosphere and you get pulled along by the crowd. And I never hit the wall, not because I was super fit, but because the crowd gives you so much motivation. What was your time on it then? How long did it take well, you to Well, it took me 20 minutes to get to the start. It wasn't a question. Really. That wasn't a question. Now, look, see, that's typical in now, isn't it? Like, he's going to justify him having a long time yeah, of course because it took him 20 minutes to get to the start. Yeah, we, we, what was your time? OK, I'll come to that. But the, the other issue is exactly like Charlene, you don't run the distance. So for me, the most important thing to do is I wanted to finish the marathon. So I'd never, I'd never run more than 15 miles. So I didn't know that I was going to be able to finish. So I really paced myself. So I went relatively slowly. And at the what end, what was your time? That's what okay, we want to okay. know. My official time was five hours, 20 minutes. Right. It took me 20 minutes to get to start, so it was about five hours. <laughs> but I think I could have done it in, in about... Th three hours? <laughs> no, I could, no, I could have probably done it in about four hours, 30 minutes. And I thought about doing it again, just because I had the That's confidence still good, to do though. it. It, it was, you finished uh, it. That's yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to, to be able to finish it. And at the end, it was almost slightly embarrassing that I pretty much sprinted the last sort of three, 400 metres in front of the crowd at the end, because I had so much left. Whereas other people kind of crawl into the end, but they were doing times far in excess of what I did. So I just, I didn't know what it was like to run that distance. So I just wanted to And was um, you, who, were you raising money for yourself or did, did you? Run? No, I, I raised. Um, <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> Love it, Rob. No, I know this guy, you know. I know no, this guy. You know, I, I mean, actually like... didn't know. There was a story. There's a story behind it. I yeah, was doing, my old sports teacher, Mr. Wookie. Um, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wookie. Wookie. He was the best. Was he in Star Wars? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was the best teacher ever. Mr. Wookie. My, yeah, with a name like no, <laughs> My sports teacher. Is that we had, um, we had votes, I think, for, to become a prefect. And I got the lowest amount of votes in the history of my school. Because each teacher get, gets like, what, like 100 <laughs> votes. And there's about 60 teachers. And I got one vote. Which was from Mr. Wookie. Yeah. So, so, and also he put me in the football team. Not that it was judged on the fact he liked me rather than natural ability. So, after I left school, his wife um, worked as a marketing director at um, a Christian hospice. So, he basically put it on me to, um, to run the marathon with him. So, I did it. So, for you Christian. raised money for Amazing. that hospice? Yeah, Christian you, you hospice. Mr. Wookie. 
Uh, he was slightly faster than me, so, oh, uh, so yeah. he left you. Yeah, he left me. But I trained with him, Mr. Wookie. Oh, oh amazing. Uh, so what Charlotte... was Mr. Wookie doing in German? What he done it in? He was so far ahead. I don't think I ever saw Mr. Wookie again after that. <laughs> I was talking last time. I had the last time I see. Mr. Wookie, where's he oh, yeah. getting these things from, man? Um, Charlene, if somebody wants to sponsor you, um, what we're going to do, we're going to put your page in the description as well. But tell us, you know, how they can sponsor you. Yep, so the charity that I'm raising money for is Macmillan Cancer. I have set up a Just Giving page, which <coughs> is justgiving.com forward slash Charlene Smith 2024. So, All right, so make sure you check that out. We'd also put that in the description. Brilliant. We got brilliant. to um, support Charlene that, yeah. on Thank this. You. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. Thank you. Um, I hope it um, I goes brilliantly watch. for you. Yeah, come yeah. out and support me, guys. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, have we'll to get down there on the date. Okay. Yeah, we'll go. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a great you. day. But where do we stand? Where's the best place to stand in and support you? There's, a, Ma there's a McDonald's on the way. <laughs> Yeah, but I feel yeah, guilty when they're scoffing McDonald's while she's running yeah, yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, Come on, Shaw, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could bring me like some carbohydrate yeah, girls. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll let you know where my end destination will be. So if you want to see me after my run and yeah, you could just line up wherever yeah. and if you want yeah, to cheer well, me on yeah, throughout. Okay. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Hopefully a game don't fall in that day. That's no, it. No, we've got we'll check the day before. The day before. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah the 7.30 yeah. cook-off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. We're there. We're Perfect. There. I've got my whole right. team coming yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> and also, as I said, make sure you sponsor her. You know, it's for a great cause, Macmillan Trust. Um, you know, Macmillan Cancer. So, what, what time to start? Um, what what fantastic. At 9.30, I think, isn't it? Yeah, um, well, I'll get the full details just before because there's going to be so many people that's going to be running, so you get different start times. So I'll let you know my start time what wave I'll be in and everything. So. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. brilliant. Of course, another marathon takes place this week and that is the marathon of trying to beat Manchester City. Arsenal going to the Etihad to take on Manchester City this weekend. I was actually up there um, yesterday. We were doing some um, content around that game. City fans, was it was quite interesting. Normally, when you go up there, they're like extremely confident. This time they were a little bit, you know, they're still confident, but they're a little bit weary of us all, is what the sort of impression that I got. There was quite a few of them sort of saying that, you know, hey, Arsenal, we, we think you lot are a very good side and this is going to be a very good game. But again, it's a place that we have not won at since 2015 in the Premier League. That is a very long time, nearly 10 years since we beat them. I think it was Santi Cozzola and uh, Giroud who yeah. scored. Remember, yeah. I was at the game. Um, that's how long since we've beaten them there. They're formidable there. They, they've been formidable this season there. It, you know, even when I was standing outside the ground, they got this big banner up saying, best team in the world, right? Best team in the land, best team in the world. And then it's got a picture of all the trophies they won last year. Five of them. The, as we know, they did the treble. They also won the World um, Club Cup. They won the, the Europe. I mean, they, they, they've won everything. Well, they didn't. They didn't win the charity shield. Well, <laughs> it's a community shield, actually. Oh, community right. Shield. Um, but apart from that, they well for last season they won everything, right? And, and it, this Lee is going to be as tough as it gets. Going away to the Etihad, a place where they just don't lose. Can we go there and finally beat them? And what would it mean if we did? Well, I do agree with you that they're the best team in, in the world at this moment in time, but they're not the best team in the league, you know, on current form. That's us. So I, I think we've got the, the best chance of winning at the Etihad for a very, very long while. I, I do believe it. I think we're in form. I don't think that we're... The only thing is the international break, so we don't know about that. But I, I also think that um, we, we are... I feel confident going into this game. I think the players will do as well. And I, I, I do believe that if we win this game, it doesn't mean to say that we're going to win the league, but I think it would be a massive, massive boost if we do. If we draw it, ain't the end of the world. But I think a defeat um, will be tough for us to, to get back uh, winning the league with Liverpool and Manchester City. But for me... I, I'm not saying like I think we should be really enjoying the moment. I'm enjoy, I'm looking forward to the game. If for the first time, even last season, I know that we 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 was all like very buoyant when we we're going up there. Do you remember we thought yeah. that we might, but we weren't so buoyant coming over. Yeah, we? <laughs> yeah, we were very 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 <laughs> quiet on the way home. But you, it was a back in your mind. We weren't 
we were sort of staggering into it like you know I think we're bouncing into this game we've put some good performances in and if we're going to beat them this is the time to do it what about you how are you feeling I keep feeling really confident really confident for the reasons that that Lee says is that the, the form that we're coming into this game is unparalleled you know you, you say that they're the best team in the world but on current form they're not they're definitely not the best team in the world but in the last 10, 10 years, they pretty much have been. Mm. And especially in, in, the, in the Premier League, you cannot argue with the stats that Man City have got. I mean, something like, was it seven out of the last 10 league championships? It's, it's just been quite, quite incredible that this could be their third one on the, on the bounce. And also the, the way that they've won the Premier League, you know, the fact that the points total that they've had and also the competition they've had. Liverpool have been phenomenal. And they've still beaten them. It's not as if it's been like Liverpool in the 80s where they didn't really have any, any direct rivals. They've had, it's been great quality. But then we come into this game and the form that Arsenal have got, you'd have to kind of think that you can back Arsenal. But then when you look at that Opta supercomputer and the stats that they come out with, the fact that they only give Arsenal an 18.8% chance of win the league, is that I'm trying to work this out, is how are they actually basing those statistics on the fact that Arsenal are the form team but they're given so little chance of actually going on to win the league and I was looking sort of I googled this morning of how are they working those stats out and they're basing them a lot on his historical stats over the last few seasons which I think is wrong so I think you've got a far better chance than the Opta computers giving Arsenal to actually go up there and, and win so I am confident but the other part of it is, is when I've looked at when City do lose, there's one player that seems to be key to that, which is Rodri. Because Rodri's got the most phenomenal record now. I think this, uh, when he scored those two penalties for Spain, he got a record that he hasn't been on a losing side for any team in the last 12 months, apart from, you could argue, that charity shield, which technically was a draw, which, th which they lost on penalties. And if Rodri plays then I, th I think we've got a massive task on our hands. Yeah, Charlene, um, it's, it's as tough as it gets, but is this the time? Yes, I am feeling really confident going into this game. I do feel like we can do the league double over City. We did manage to get the one nil win against them. You know when there was that. Bit a lot of people forget that. You know, exactly. that we did actually. Yeah, but, I had to remind the City fan that yesterday. I go, we did actually beat you. Uh, and exactly. You know, Rodri, was, Rodri wasn't playing. Rodri wasn't playing. That's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, we did keep Haaland quiet. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling quite confident. I know it's been um, a long time since um, Man City have lost that they had as well. You know, they're on an unbeaten run. I think it's since November 2022 or something like that. It's been a long while, I believe. Um, but I do feel like we're going into this game in really good form. You know, since the, we've come back from Dubai, we've managed to score 33 goals and only concede four goals. So I feel like we're in great form going into this game. Our confidence is high as well. The amount of goals that we've been scoring, the way we've been turning teams over, emptying stadiums. Let's not forget all of that hard work that we've been putting in. Um, so I'm feeling really confident going into this game and I feel like we will, you know, get a win at the Etihad. Yeah, I mean, we can take that into this game, Lee, innit? The oh, fact sure. that away from home this season, apart, you take out the Fulham game, we've been really good on the road. I mean, places that are tricky to go to, I know it hasn't been Etihad type places, but we've gone there and done well. We didn't lose at Anfield. Uh, we didn't win, but we didn't lose. I mean, but this is a moment, isn't it? This is a moment in the season that could really define well, it's a our moment. Arsenal serious contenders for yeah. this title. It reminds me, like, remember when Leicester, when they won the league, they went to City and they beat them. And that was when I remember watching, like, a lot of Leicester games and thinking, you know, they were on that run. I was thinking, yeah, they're all right, but they're going to kind of come. when they won that game I was like you know what Yeah, you, you, I think this could be they could go all the way I, I think <clears> this is really parallel and reminds me of 98 it really does when Manchester United were a very very dominant and we come along and we went on a fantastic run but 10 games to go we went to, to, to Old Trafford and you still fancied Manchester United. Even going up there that day, you felt like Man United were still going to win. We ended up winning it 1-0. Walking away from that game, we're going to do it. Yeah. And I think that this is the same sort of feeling for me. Manchester City have been very, very dominant. There's, you know, 
Arsenal now are not taking over, but are on are pushing them. And I, and I think that, that that's where we are at this moment. So I think it will be a massive, massive boost if we win this game, not just for the league, but for the whole, for the, you know, the Champions League and everything like that. What, listen, anything can happen in this game. We can go up there and we can get stuffed. They're good enough to do that. They're good enough, we're good enough to get a, a win, draw, whatever. Anything can happen in this game. But I also look at like, you know, oh, Rodri weren't playing against... Uh, you know, like that's an excuse. Like everybody keeps saying that now. Like I'm not saying mm. that Julian say, "Oh, Rodri didn't play in that game. We didn't have Martinelli playing in that game. We didn't have Saka playing in that game." You know what I mean? Well, he, well, he came on, didn't he, Martinelli? And he was the one that changed he, the game. He came, he came on and changed half. it, but he didn't start in that game. Yeah. When we when we um, we played them back here last time, we didn't. We had party pulling out right at the last minute. We, th- this time around, it looks like <clears throat> they're having the little injuries little blips and things like that and we're looking like we're going into it full strength I think it's very very important that team sheet when it comes out by the way I think that I'll be slightly more confident within the game if Martinelli's in the team because he's the one that will really stretch Manchester City like I don't think that we've got I watched Trossard the other night I thought he was brilliant against England but he, he, he's he's a footballer and he, a neat little player. He isn't one to stretch and and, and break mm. the lines. We've got we've got to have that. It'd be very interesting if Martinelli's not fit. I'd like to see Jesus but, out. There. But wouldn't it be better if Martinelli if Martinelli is fit to have him on the bench, the kind of player that could come on and stretch them when they're a little bit tired and, that, and do like la, last half an hour and have to and, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, 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 so if we keep it keep it tight I mean the issue with with last season obviously the season before was just a bit of a bit of a joke but last season was we conceded that early goal after seven minutes and then just before half time I think it was right stroke of half time wasn't it 45 minutes when there was that VAR check and that really killed us off mm. that we went in at, at two nil down but if we're drawing nil nil, I mean the two games we've beaten them, and I include the Charity Shield in that, they were very very tight games, and they were both won by Arsenal right at the end. So maybe you shouldn't be playing Marseille right for the beginning. There's, yeah. a, there's an option for that, like you know, what I mean, that, to do that. But I, I think if if Walker's playing, if they do take a gamble yeah. on him, you know, what I mean, then Martinelli. Well, I'm, I, I don't say that Martinelli should start. I, I, I think that maybe this is where. Um, he comes into his own yeah. but I, what I want is Martinelli available I want Jesus available I want them all available Sack. I want them all available and go for it I really think we've got to go yeah, for City it. haven't been at this sparkling best no they, they haven't and even when you think about it right like they didn't beat Liverpool at home they didn't beat Chelsea at home you know they they've, didn't beat they, Spurs at yeah. home they didn't beat Spurs at home either so they, 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 they didn't lose the games and, Spurs and, and, scored three but, there Robbie yeah. you know yeah. Spurs scored three there so they're vulnerable they're not they're not, I, I don't like to say it because, you know, you, you're building up to the game. But I don't think they're, they're at the same calibre and uh, the standards they were last season. I don't mm. think that they are. I, it's I, very hard to. It, it's very, it's hard, very to, hard to. But they've you know, also replicate. lost some very, very good players yeah. from last season. Like, and Gundogan, all of a sudden, Maris. yeah, uh, Cancelo at the back was, is not there now. Like, all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah, we've got to get Stones playing. We've got, they've got. They've still got a very, very good eleven, but they're back up. Like, for instance, last season, game just before we played them, uh, they played in the FA Cup semi-final. Mara scored that trick. He didn't play against us. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they, they had that sort of luxury of leaving out a player that scored an hat trick. I don't think they've got that mm. luxury now. Mm. Yep, yep. And let's not forget as well. Um, last season, we didn't have Declan Rice. So De- Declan Rice has been a fantastic player yeah. for us as well. You know, yeah, no, he made that um, clearance off the line when at the Emirates Stadium when we played Man City as well. So I think he's going to be fundamental defensively as well as getting forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah. Remember, no. he, yeah, exactly. He was out injured, game. so uh, it's going to be a yeah. different um, we Arsenal have, side. We did have Rob Holding, who actually scored who the goal scored as the well. Goal. <laughs> Good yeah. banger, actually. Yeah, oh, on, on 86 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we did. Miss so we'd be in better Saliba. shape going there, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah, which, and, which should and, depends on the injuries though because we've, we've still got a few doubts I mean both teams have got some doubts on players and a lot, how, uh, how do you feel about that do you feel that's all mind games or I, I, I think, I think there's likely. a lot of mind games going yeah. on I really do um, I, I, I get the feeling like a lot of those City players will make it yeah. Um, you know, I was chatting to Big Steve yesterday, even to reckons that Edison will make it he's one of the ones that they said that could be out long term um, and I think some of the Arsenal players that they're talking, I'm not sure about Martinelli, but I feel Saka 
yeah. will be all right. Yeah. You know, what I mean, uh, Gabriel will be all right. You know, I think if they if they had serious games to play and they hadn't have been friendlies, they would have played. We've seen loads of players throughout these friendlies being withdrawn and yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with I mean, them in my on, opinion on the Carl Walker injury I mean I was actually at Wembley and I was sat next to the bench the England bench and when he came back to the bench he, he went straight down straight down the tunnel and I think towards in the second half he came back out and he ran up the stairs <laughs> there you go. That yeah. was that then. Yeah. I, I, he did not look like he had a hamstring. I don't there, think in there was fact, he, wrong he with ran him. up the stairs, just sort of jumped. You know, when you sort of you, you you jump over a couple of stairs, you don't walk up each one. He was like jumping a few. He looked fine to me. Yeah, did you happen to see John Stones as well? No, I wasn't at that game. Oh, okay. A lot of mind games going on. I do feel that some of these players um, will be fit. But the thing, what you said, Lee, is really interesting. Arsenal for the first time in a long time going to one of these huge games with practically everybody yeah, fit. Yeah, it's a big thing. The selection of the team is going to be really, really interesting. Do you bring Partey back in? Do you bring Georgi do you, do you have the, a double pivot with Jorginho and um, Declan Rice or do you maybe have Partey and Declan Rice? You've got that option to do that. You know, um, is it Trossard or Martinelli? Does Jesus start this game instead of having Havertz up front? I mean, they, you know, Mikel Arteta is going to have quite a full squad to pick from with something that he's not had going into a lot of these big games. Yeah, and, and, and he has. And he's also got, I know I, I wouldn't play party if I was, to be honest, and, and, but he's got Jesus <coughs> that's fresher than, than, than say, a Havertz. Yeah, because he wasn't or, away with He uh, wasn't Brazil. away with that. You know, like Havertz played two games. I know he come off in both games, but he's a bit still, uh, same as Trossard. Saka um, hopefully will be all right. But I, I think that we've got a little bit more freshness to our side as well, like, you know. So it'd be really interesting what he does. I think, like, six weeks ago, probably everybody would say that Havertz is, well, I don't know if they're playing him or not. I think he's a certainty now, whether it be up front or in the midfield. Personally, I'd, I'd go with him up front because I think that he played really well in the Community Shield game. And I also think that he made a difference when he come on in the, uh, you know, he helped the goal for, for uh, Martinelli, didn't he? Mm -hmm. like, you know? yeah. So I, I think he's going to be a key player for us in this game because he's something different to what we didn't have last season. So uh, it'd be really interesting. What I, said. I, I would go personally, Jorginho, Rice, Odegaard as my midfield three. I, I think yeah. Jorginho has really impressed me. And, and, and if you look at the last few games, big games that we played, Liverpool, City, he's been involved in them. He's played in them mm -hmm. games. So the Party's games back though. Party's you know. back. He, he even played a, in, a, in a friendly yeah. game um, behind closed doors. Would you doors. play Party then? Would you? Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I probably stick with Jorginho because, you know, That's but great. you have got that option, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. We, we forget, right, that this guy, he was like, like last like season. He was one of the best players. Last yeah. season, we were like, we will pull our hair out because like, oh no, he's going to, he ain't going to, he's going to have to come off and stuff like that. <laughs> do we actually need to start him in this game or would you start with Jorginho as well? We yeah, but, I mean, one thing we tend to forget is towards the end of last season, it was actually Jorginho who was playing instead of Partey when Partey was fit. So it hasn't just been a flash in the pan that Jorginho's <laughs> become this, this great integral part of our team. It started pretty much from when he arrived. I mean, he's been here just over a year. And he's only ever let us down once in that Spurs game when, you know, it's just un an unfortunate mm. an unfortunate slip. So so I would play Jorginho because you've got to go on, on current form. But the other side of it is Arteta would have seen, again, in this friendly, I know they lost 4-0 at QPR, but it was there was nine sort of youth team players against, you know, we only had two of our first team players, which was Tommy Asu and uh, Partey playing against a full-strength QPR team. But one thing... Arteta would have had the luxury of over the last few weeks is seeing Partey up close and all the, you know, they'll, they'll be taking all the stats. So they'll know if Partey's ready. Because one thing is, I think Partey at his best is better than Jorginho at his best. So if Partey is closest to, you know, being at full fitness, I, I would play him. But I, I still think with the amount of time he's had out 
and the form that Jorginho's got and also the understanding that he's developed. So I don't think we should forget this is a team game. It's not about individuals. And Declan Rice and Jorginho have had a chance over the last few months to form an understanding and a partnership. What about you? Would you Jorginho or Partey? Do you know, it's very well said um, what Julian and Lee have both said with their points. Um, another thing I want to say as well is with um, Partey, I don't like to rush him back from injury, especially with the pace and the yeah. intensity Won't of the Premier really Premier a rush back yeah. now. It's been, you know, a few weeks now since he's sort of been back, isn't he? So Yeah, but in terms of like the minutes that he's played in the Premier mm. League and everything, um, I wouldn't start him in this game because it's Man City <laughs> you know it's going to be a much higher pressure game as well so my preference would be to start Jorginho for this what game. about Jesus because yeah. you know like Lee said a few weeks ago or probably five six weeks ago he'd be a certainty to be starting up front for Arsenal but Havertz has been playing this sort of false number nine role he's been doing really well do you he scored as well um, during the international break um, for his for his country Germany Havertz do you keep Havertz in the team or do you bring Jesus in and say, right, go and have a run at your old guys? You know what I mean? You're used to playing at that place as well, the Etihad. Mm. You're used to playing there, you know the place. Go there, go and deliver for us or is it you keep Havertz? For me, I keep Havertz for the fact that he's in fantastic form. His confidence has been boosted so much. Um, he's had a lot of goal involvement, whether he's scoring, assisting. So I keep Havertz and bring Jesus off the bench. He'll be even more hungry, more passionate. As we see, he's even more hungry to score. So I'll bring Jesus off the bench, but start right. Havertz. Yeah. It's all about as well, how do we keep out City? How do we stop Haaland? Remember last year, I don't know if you remember, Lee, they switched their tactics up a bit. Mm, they, went, they, they were hitting long balls up to Haaland, who was then playing in. Um, De Bruyne and they caused us all sorts of problems I think they kind of took us by surprise with their tactics that day Haaland of course scored in the game was very quiet when we played him at the, um, at the Emirates but it's Haaland how do we keep him quiet how do we keep De Bruyne quiet Rodri quiet Silver quiet. I mean, it's a, <laughs> the whole team quiet. quiet. It's a lot to keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I think play like we did in the in the home game. I think we was um, tactically brilliant that game. I think like we was a little bit more cautious than what we have been at certain times. Uh, you know, it could have been we could have been three 0 down before they actually scored that day. You know what I mean? For, from that, and at the end of the day. Going to that game, we didn't have Saliba. We knew that was a big thing, like, you know what I mean? And I think after that game, I think Kivia came in, didn't he, like, for, for holding. I think that was his yeah. last game. But it was, you know. And uh, look, credit to, to, to Pep. He knew that there was a weakness there and they exploited that. And you have to say they changed their game to, 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 for that. Different kettle of fish now up against Saliba and, and Gabriel, who, for me, have been the best partnership <laughs> in the Premier League Central defensively and I, I think that you know if Arsenal are to win the league that, that it's, it, it, it will come down to them two you know that defensive partnership like you know we, if you look back in time to all the teams that we played at Arsenal always had two very very good central defenders in the past we've had one but we've got two now that are as good as each other and, and they complement each other really mm. well and um, if you want to go physical with Gabriel <laughs> Bring it on, Haaland. That's how I look at it. Like, you know, if you want to go quick, he's, then you've got Saliba's pace. And I'll tell you what, Gabriel's no slouch neither, like, you know. So, and then you've got, how to, to, to stop that, you've got Declan Rice in front of that. If you look at when Tony Adams and Martin Keown and the, all those guys are playing, they had Vieira and Petit or Vieira and Edu in front of them or, or Gilberto. They've always had that player in front. And I think mm. that we could, you know, as Charlene said earlier on, like, we, you know, we're going to this game if everything's right, with Saliba playing, which we didn't have last season, and Declan Rice, you know what I mean? And I know like maybe Party ain't going to be playing, but do you imagine if like, you, 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 I, I think there's a little question that you can play Jorginho for 60, 70 minutes and two retires, and then you're bringing on Party for the last 20. So I think that if we can block that off, and I, I do think that De Bruyne will play, I know that he's been injured and all that, but he, he's going to play. He'll be all right. He's going to play like, you know, but I don't think that he can play at an intensity for 90 minutes no more. I think it's 60, 70 minutes 
you know, and then he might come he, off. He can kill a team in six minutes. Well, he can kill minutes, a team in, a in five or six minutes, you know what yeah. I mean? He's very, very good. So, but if we can contain that, and then that, that last 20 minutes, we could, could, we could be the team that could overpower yeah. him. Because I think the other thing you said there, you, you know, you mentioned Silver and there's other players and all that. Like, we're, we're a big, powerful, well, I think we're a more powerful side than them nowadays. Mm. They've got like, you know, um, technically small, smaller players, you know, mm. Foden are fantastic players. Don't get me wrong. But you look at the Arsenal team now, physically powerful. So if we can get to that 70 minutes, we might be able to, yeah. Steamroll them. Yeah. Um, Steamroll them. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. At the end. I mean, I'm not saying that yeah. we're going to win like four or five, you know what I mean? Like, and, and empty the Etihad yeah. um, before it normally is empty. But like, um, but it's pretty quiet there anyway, isn't yeah. it? So it's not, not like well, it won't be quiet on Sunday. It's not like Anfield. It won't be quiet on Sunday. That place will be rocking. It worked quite last year when they had us on the ropes. That That is the atmosphere there is going to be but electric. You, you can quiet This is a huge game. Easily. It's huge. I wouldn't, look, I'm not saying it's completely quiet. He's upsetting it's, him. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it won't be quiet. It's a dead atmosphere. But you cannot compare that stadium with Anfield, which is our other rivals. But it'll it, be, it, it, even when Liverpool aren't playing well, that crowd at Anfield lifts and carries that team to a performance. And we've seen that over the last few, few seasons. Whereas at the Etihad, if that team isn't performing, then that, that crowd can be quiet. And, that doesn't normally and, happen though, does it? No, yeah. it, it, it doesn't. But you, you asked of, of how do we defend against that. And everyone here has said that they'd play Havertz as, as the forward and gave, gave their reasons. I'd actually look at Havertz as the first line of defence. Because one of the things that will happen to us that other teams aren't able to do is that City will press us very high up the pitch in a way that, and a quality that we're not used to. And having Havertz up front... Give us that outlet. Yeah, the, 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 press, you, yeah. you can put, you can beat that press. Whereas if you've got Jesus up front, not so much. Is that Havertz can hold the ball and is aerially um, a lot more superior. So I think the first thing about stopping them play is actually having Havertz up front. Who's the key player to stop in City's team? I keep saying Haaland. Is it Haaland or is it someone else? Who's the stop who the is it? Who is it that we've got to stop to have any joy up there? It's a question between Haaland and De Bruyne, I say. You know, Haaland's an absolute beast powerhouse, you know, that could just score goals. De Bruyne's another one who are fair. So I think it's out of those two. You know, if we could keep them quiet. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of quality on Man City's team, though. Foden, but yeah, Silver. Exactly. Who you need to keep an eye on Rodri. out as well while you're trying to keep um, De Bruyne and Haaland quiet. You know, yeah. you can have Silva out wide trying to run forward in behind so there's a saying in football like you know what I mean like a striker is only as good as his service yeah and and that is it like Foden stop him stop Rodri stop Silva stop De Bruyne stop a lot of players to stop if you could take just one player out of their team that's going to be injured who would it be if they could lose one player a De Bruyne for me okay yeah where'd you go it's, it's close with De Bruyne. I think he's got to say, it's amazing. He's got like 299 assists in his career, 250 of them at, at, at club level. But I'd still take from the stats I've seen on Rodri and the amount of games that we'll the, take Rodri. Yeah. I, I, I would take Rodri. He, for me, has got absolutely everything about his game. You know, everything superior with that guy. And, and the thing, we, we, you're right what you're saying to a certain degree because they haven't got anybody like Rodri to replace him. No, no. Like, you know what I mean? Where you could like, if, if De Bruyne ain't playing, mm. Foden can go in there. I, 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 I understand what you're saying there. Like, but I just think when you're at home, um, you know, he, he was a game changer in that game last season. I, I just think if he was outstanding when he on that day, you know, caused us all sorts of problems. I, I do think he's a fantastic footballer, even though I don't think he's at the peak of, of what he was. Mm. But like, you know, listen, I was hoping that it come through like Spain. Oh, that Rodri's gone off, you know. What I mean? <laughs> like, uh, but but it didn't, like, you know. But um, he scored two penalties. Scored, yeah, he's a quality player. He is a mm. quality player. But I I think I don't, you know, maybe. We can counteract that with the yeah. Rice and him in there. I don't know. Who's like. the key for us? Declan key Rice. Player. Declan Rice, for sure. He could get forward, score goals. He does his defensive duties as well. You know, he's keeping an eye on what's going on and getting back, you know, making clearances off the line. He's done that in a few games for us. So, key player for us is Declan Rice. Plus, he wore that captain's armband. 
for England as well. You know, his confidence is, it was high already. It's going to be a bit annoyed about that. He played two games. Two, two, yeah. Two. I know, exactly. He but, played two games. Yeah. Havertz played two games. We've you know, had a few players. Sort of, yeah, but no, everybody yeah. come off. Yeah. Mm. Havertz come off. Odegaard come off. The only, the only two that I've got a little bit of a worry about in this Arsenal team is Kivir and Shinchenko because they had to play yeah. playoff games. Playoff yeah, games. But Shinchenko, they, Shinchenko but was a substitute. Substitute yeah, one, but, but Kivir played. But the, the good thing about them is they won those minutes. games. Right? Yeah. So they're, so they're on both high. on high. They're on a so high. It was, that, was, that was it. Interesting Kivier, one there, Kivir. Do you start Kivir at left back? That's my right. only... Or do you bring in back Tommy in Zinchenko, Tommy Asu? Because that is another area. Uh, listen, Kivio's been brilliant, but that'll be an area they'll look to exploit. They got you, you know, you've got your Dokus out there, you've got your, like Foden. you said, Fodens, Silvers. I mean, that is going to be a variant, but the fullbacks are going to be targeted. Ben White and Kivio. Obviously, Ben White starts. Kivio, do you take him out for this game? It all, all depends on Tommy Asu's fitness levels. I wouldn't put Zinchenko in for Tommy start. Asu's fully fit. Then I'd play Tommy Asu. That is my my only fear is uh, my worry is that he's played two intensive games. You know what I mean? Like because on the Thursday yeah. and the Tuesday, and he went he went the full he went the full, full on, on both of them because he had to. I'm not saying you know what I mean mm. they're, they're, it, it weren't like friendlies like where well, you know. Well, the first game they won five one, it? but yeah. it's the second someone, game. Did someone go to penalty. The second one went to penalties. Yeah, extra well. time penalties. Yeah, and, and he looked uh, like, well, not only and they all looked out on their feet. You know what mm. I mean? So. But they've got the extra day. They've got too. the extra day. And, and they're professional footballers. I, I'm going to say, uh, like Tommy Asu would probably like. It, it would be a big. It would be a big thing to leave him out. I think Kivia deserves to start. For me, that one's a no-brainer. I'm starting Kivia. I know he played X amount of minutes, but he's had enough time to recover, recuperate, come back strong. I think he's great defensively. So Kivio starts for me. I love Tom Yasu. He's a great player to bring off the bench as well, who can still impact games. So Kivio definitely starts. With Sinchenko, I know he is a former Man City player, but at times... He's a bit of a liability defensively, you know. I know he does his thing drifting Not the into midfield and everything. But for this game, I really want to see someone who's a bit more defensive-minded. Yeah. And for me, it's got to be Kivio that starts. OK, so let, let me just... I'm going to run through the team and um, what I think you guys are thinking of, right? So basically, it's uh, in goal, Rhea. Mm-hmm. No? <laughs> Are you still pushing the... Uh, you still want Ramsdale in? Go on, say it. <laughs> Ramsdale! <laughs> Ramsdale, you said... No, no, no. I right, right, think... Raya's... Raya, Raya and goal. goal. Especially he got man of the match as well um, in Spain. that Champions League game. Yeah, he played... Yeah, like, like, yeah you can't like... like Mate, that was the last game we played. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you, you know, Raya, Raya I thought... Um, ben White, right back. Yeah. yeah. Centre-backs, we know Saliba, Gabriel. If, and then, if they're fit. Yeah. And Kivio. Oh, yeah. I would have Tommy Asp, but it's... Kivio, uh, it looks like most people are going there. Kivio, I wouldn't be upset yeah. if Tommy Asu played yeah. because of mm. what we've talked about. But um, you know, listen, he might come back and 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 look in training and go. Do you know what? He's not quite ready for this. But okay, and then Jorginho, yep. Rice, Odegaard, yep, yep. Saka, um, Havertz. Then on that left, if he's fit, Martin Ellie. If he's not fit. Trossard. Trossard, you say? I'll say You're saying Jesus. I'm going Jesus. Oh, I'd have Jesus. You're saying Jesus. So they're going Jesus, you're going Trossard. Yeah. Where are you going? She better looking than you. I'll go Trossard. <laughs> <laughs> That's not all just about football, is it? No, 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 no. You're I'm ugly, mate. To be fair, I'll take that off the show. Just show I'll go, I ain't gonna Do you know what, right? It's a really hard one if you've been fair, like, because Trossard. Scored. I mean, look at the big goal he scored against. Uh, and he started the last, He started he, against Porto and scored. Yeah, the big yeah. goal he scored against Porto. But then Jesus. And he scored against used the Charity Shield. He was I think, one. He was one yeah, of the yeah, right at the yeah. End. And Community I mean, Shield. Get that right. Yeah, I think. I think. I, think, oh, I live in the past. I think <laughs> I'd stick with Trossard, you know. I think Listen, I, 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 I don't think Trossard's done anything wrong. I look at it and I just think that you know, completely different players. I just think that maybe, especially if, if Walker plays, it's, you know, mm. he, I don't care what anybody says, he, you know, he ain't testing that, that hamstring like the first run that Martinelli runs at him, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, so, like, you know, test him, you know, 
make him stretch, make him do anything. Like that. Trossard's a different sort of player. He, he cuts inside and all that. Like, you know, ball retention, more with him. I, listen, I think it's harsh. If it, I actually watched him against um, Belgium because I thought like he was a good guy. I thought he was harsh for him to be the, the sort of one to be withdrawn. I'm looking at him thinking, well, you know. But then I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a little chat between Belgium and you know certainly the phone mm. call you know Gareth Southgate when, when it was ringing like you know, I saw Terry on the phone let it ring let it ring <laughs> you know what I mean but every other manager took all the players off at the mm. right so apart from Gareth Southgate you know what I mean okay. Gareth in to <laughs> Manchester United as quickly as possible please um, let's get some predictions Charlene what do you think the score's going to be I'm going 3-2 Arsenal 3-2 high scoring game <laughs> yep Julian oh, I'm going for the draw what? As in, they'll draw the game. Yeah, what do you think the draw uh, will be? It'll be, it'll be a low six six. Draw. No, <laughs> I, th- I think it'll be, be a one all draw. Lee? 2 1 to the Arsenal. 2 1 to the Arsenal. I'm going I, I, I actually went for a draw as well in my predictions. I, I went 2 So that's basically you're not confident? I'm confident that we can go out there and play well. I'm confident we can go out there and get something out of the game. They've just got up unbelievable home record which is it's a very difficult I, I think right now in world football it's the hardest place to go to and get a win that's my opinion I, I, I would be satisfied I want to win I'm desperate to go there and win because we haven't won there for a long time but if it was a draw I would be satisfied with the fact that I, you know, I, I this get, season we've taken four points off them yeah. and I'd still be then thinking right that, that that still gives us a lot of confidence. Well, even if we get a draw, if we get but a if draw, if we go out yeah. and win, yeah. oh my god! I if, mean, if, if we go out and win, do you think we can then go? Are you starting to think we're going to go all the way? Yeah, if we can, if we win there, I think that we, I think we win the league. I think I'm not saying that, that we can't, uh, that we will, but in my opinion, I think that we can win the league yeah, from then. I don't think we can win the league at this moment in time. I still think it's too tough for us at this moment in time. When you look at the games that we've got, to what the other teams have got, I think that we uh, as and this is one of those really uh, yeah. Tough games, as, as Julian's spreadsheet says, we're third favourites. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I get no, no, that. No, I get that. My spreadsheet said we were going to win it. It was the Optus supercomputer. Yeah, yeah right, you know what I mean. Like, so, yeah. Winning it. So, but I, I you know, oh, I, I think you put, 2. I think you put down a draw for this one on that I did on your put thing. Down a draw. So, but I think that I'm not convinced that we. I think we've got some real tough games to still to come, like you know. But, but if if we was to win that game, I think that would be the confidence, not just for the fans, but for the players as well, would be a big thing, like you know. What I mean, I, I, I think it's a. You know, if we can go there and win, I, I'm, I'm then going to say, look, yeah, we can win the league. What about you, Julian? If we win this game, are you thinking to yourself, yeah, we can wrap this, well, we, well, wrap it up, but yeah. I mean, we can win this oh, league. All right, so there's, there's two ways. If you take that question literally of can we win, I've said for a long time, I said when we were at the bottom of the league, we could win the league. But the question really needs to be rephrased is, do you think we will win the league? And I think if we do win, I mean, we're absolutely capable. I, I see it as so tight between Liverpool, Man City and ourselves. It's very difficult to actually call it. But if we go there and win, and then we've got nine games to go, and it's totally in our hands at that point. Mm, so, massive. So I actually think we will win the league if we, if we win at City. And the other thing is, like, we, if we if we draw this game, we're still a point in front of City. Let's forget, you know, yeah. just take Liverpool out of the equation Liverpool at the got moment. Brighton just before, just before, well, anything can happen in that game. By the way, Brighton can get something, but we'll see. But ultimately, if we don't win that game and we draw it, we're still a point in front of City with a better goal difference. with a better goal difference with nine games to go. So it still wouldn't be like a disaster, like you know, um, but still be a good result for us. A draws, you know, if yeah. we was to draw it, I, I, you know, if you've been really honest with me now, and God comes down there and says to me like, you, you're going to draw this game one one. Julian's going to be right. Would you take it? I'd say no, two two. But like, you know, <laughs> oh, such a creep. <laughs> I would actually say yes. I, I before I would take that. All right. What well, would you? 
Yeah, listen, I feel like we're, we'll be in a stronger position um, to be able to win the league. I think the key thing for Arsenal right now is our mentality, just keeping mentally strong, going out there, putting out good performances. And I believed from the beginning of the season that we'll win the league and I'm still believing. And the team is making me believe even more that we can with all the amazing things we've been doing. I can see Julian shaking his head in disagreement. No, I'm the complete is opposite. Is I'm just listening to you. <laughs> I'm just listening to you and, and I'm inspired by what you're saying and I totally agree it wasn't that I was disagreeing I totally agree because you have belief and Arsenal That's have belief and, and what you're doing you're feeling the belief of the team and it's transmitting to you and, and that's a very special but, thing. And why is that belief that, like, you know what I mean? Because I can tell you that now, after the Fulham game, that was it, I'm done. Mm. I'm done. But what they've done over these last eight games since Dubai and the way that they've played and all that has got, I think, every single Arsenal fan believing. Absolutely. And that's, that's what you need to do. Yeah, but here's the difference. With you, if we get, <laughs> if we get smacked at, at City, <laughs> what's going to happen? We ain't winning the league. Yeah, you're just going to be, we're shit. No, we're, no, I'll never uh, say that. Oh, I'll are out. <laughs> yeah. I've never ever said that, like, but what I, what yes, I you believe... Have. I'm, I'm not, yes, you not, have. Not, yes, you <laughs> have. Four years oh, ago. No, no, after the Fulham game. No, I never said I'll oh, out. Oh, come on. No, I on never that, said that. No, no, no. On that little walk back to the car with Ty. No, no, no. I would have killed any... And the coach would have walked past. I'd have put... I'd have, yeah. I'd have put shotguns in the tires yeah, in the tires at the time. I'm, I've got the ump yeah, like, it, the way they play. Exactly, but, sh- but but Charlene is different. No, no. From but you. I'm, re- I'm reflection of it. I, I'm, I'm reflection. I still think, right? Uh, uh, you, maybe I'm wrong here. You I'm are. still thinking. Uh, uh, if we don't win the league this season, I won't look at it and think because we lost at the Etihad. I will look at those two games against Fulham. That's where, I'll, and, and particularly yeah. that one against Fulham, I will go. Where do you where do you think we lost the league? Craven Cottage. Mm. I still think that that result will be a bad one, like you know what I mean for us. Even though I think Liverpool and Man City, if I'm not wrong, I've got to go there. Yeah, I think both have got to go there. And so the tough place uh, of being United. It's, well, a, t- it's a tough. So but I do think that, like, but I do think that like, since you know, since the Dubai thing and all that, like you know, for Arsenal to get back in the title race, they had to win every single game up to City, and I think every. A lot of Arsenal fans go, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do it. But not, not only have we done it, it's the way we've gone about it. And the way we've done it has given me confidence that, that we can go, go to City and win. Not saying that we're going to win that, but I, I do believe that we have a, a genuine chance of beating City on Sunday. I really do. All right. Well, listen, you've heard what we've had to say about it. You can talk all you want about the game. It's going to be played out on Sunday and it is an absolutely massive game. If Arsenal do win it, I really do believe like what these guys are saying. It sets us in such a good stead for the rest of the end, of, for the rest of the season, and it could be that game that everybody starts to believe and think to himself, right, this is it. This is and 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 I feel the team have learnt a lot from last season, and this is a game where we can prove that that we've learnt a lot from our setbacks from last season because we. And also, we're going into this game, I feel, in better shape. Last year, when we went into that game, remember, we were coming off the cup a few draws. Our heads were down a bit. Mm. We knew we were on the ropes a bit. We had to win that game, really. And City knew they could smell blood. And, and it's a bit different this time. And I picked up that vibe when I was up at the stadium yesterday that, you know, they're, they're looking at it and thinking, this is a different Arsenal team this year. Not going to be an easy game. They're still confident but definitely not going to be an easy game. I want to say a massive thanks going out to our sponsors of today's show, HelloFresh. Don't forget you can earn 60% off your first box and 20% off your next box um, from HelloFresh. Um, I highly recommend it. I I gave it a try at home and it's very easy to to cook. All you've got to do is click the link below or scan the QR code and use the code AFTV60, 60% off. What more do you want? It gets delivered to your house. It's absolutely fantastic. And that's a fantastic discount. So make sure you check that out. Also, don't forget Charlene is running the London Marathon. Um, well done to her. <laughs> this, is, this is brilliant. She's run it for a great charity. So if you want to sponsor her, um, again, we're going to put the information um, in the description. Make sure you give her a, um, a sponsor. It takes a lot 
to a lot of effort to run um, the London Marathon is a really, really difficult thing to do. Even though Julian did it, it is a tough thing. To, no, no, big up to Julian as well. Did for, he do it? For, yeah, I did do it. Actually, I've I've got, do, got the, have you got any I've, photos? Yeah, I'll show you, I'll yeah, show yeah, you yeah. the picture. When I brought my six pack yeah, pictures in, the, one of them was there. Yeah, well, that's that six pack <laughs> thing that's what got me thinking. Yeah. Is he telling the truth? You know what I mean? Because that, you know. But well done to Julian. Yeah, he well told done. us he ran it, so we'll take his word for it. What no, was it? Ninety what? Ninety five. Long before we knew him, but you know, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean uh, I'll bring the picture Sunday for me finishing the marathon. Finishing. What about yeah. in the middle of it, guys? Have you got any yeah, pictures around the middle? Did you when you're running, bus or something? No, like, <laughs> sort of thing you do. Like, I mean, that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the sort of thing yeah. you do. Yeah. Jump, on you do. jump on a bus. He jump no, on a bus. Ding ding! Unbelievable. I never cheat. I just have a strategy. He stretches it. That jumping on the bus thing now starts to make me thinking. Ding ding! In his defence, there will be a lot of road closures, so I don't know how many buses will be about. This guy will find a way. Well, well done to Julia when he ran it as well, but well done to you um, and wishing you all the best of luck thank with you, that. Thank and, you, thank um, you. And also, Lee, thank you very much. No, you're, no. you're definitely not running the marathon <laughs> the way I saw you walking in no, here today. Now, now um, gone. But listen, we're all going to be at the game and let's hope it's a massive win for Arsenal on Sunday and then on to Luton after that. And then after that, who have we got after Brian. that? Brighton. Brighton. Big games, lots of big games. From now till the end of the season, every single week is a huge cup final game for Arsenal. It's going to be massive and, and we're going to be all over it here. Apparently, like um, Julian cycling to Brighton, like, you know, the London Brighton cycling run. He's Are doing you? that. Like, well, yeah. well, actually, he's always done that and all that. No, well, uh, I didn't do that. I was, at a, um, I was at an event, I think it was a bar mitzvah, and, um, and there was a guy, he was talking to me about what do you do to keep fit? And I said, I said, I was cycling. And he said, oh, we've got a, a cycling club. And he, he said, we're, we're actually organising a, a cycle. And I thought it was very loud. And I thought he said, London to Brighton. I thought, okay, I think I could do that. It's about 60 miles, I could do that. And when I started training, once I got into it, I realised it didn't say Brighton at all, he said Brussels. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you did still doing it? it? No, no, I, I did it. I, oh, wow. I did it. Oh, you did that as well? You got yeah. evidence on London, London to Brussels. Evidence? I'll provide the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, yeah. no. no anyway, thanks for watching the show today. <laughs> we will be back next week. And come on, you Arsenal. Let's go. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion, Brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.